Surah 5, verse 43. The historical background of this verse is that some Jews came to Muhammad to judge a dispute. Allah responded by saying to Muhammad, Once again, beloved, I greet you and I welcome you to Lost in Media. My name is Boa Chesterman, and you know for sure that whenever I get in my seat here, it's about we dismantling those several assertions that has been made against Christianity since time immemorial. Well, we are actually going to David Wood. David Wood, he has a lot in store for us. I hope he gets with me. He's actually educating us on, uh, what is it, uh, Muhammad's belief about the Bible. How and what he saw the Bible to be, most especially the Torah or the Torah, okay, the Torah of Anabi Musa. Well, we taking a quick break and we are returning to uh, David Wood while he take us through um, Muhammad's uh, belief about the Torah. Surah 5, verse 43. The historical background of this verse is that... You welcome back, beloved. Yes, let's quickly go to David Wood. He has a lot for us. Some Jews came to Muhammad to judge a dispute. Okay, that's Surah Al-Maidah, Ayah 43. What next? Allah responded by saying to Muhammad... Okay, so he actually is giving us the historical background of the verse he cited or he referenced. That is Surah Al-Maidah, Ayah 43. According to Samshamun and according to the his history, uh, historical background of uh, this verse of the Quran, the Jews came to Muhammad, Muhammad to judge a dispute. They had a dispute among themselves and thus they had wanted for Muhammad to uh, sort things out for them. And uh, what happened, David Wood? But how do they come to you, Muhammad, for decision while they have the Torah, the Torah, in which is the plain decision of Allah? Yet even after that, they turn away, for they are not really believers. Okay, so when they had confronted Muhammad, mayhaps Muhammad confronted Allah. Allah, what should I tell uh, these people? They won't get some judgment from me. What do I tell them? Allah responded by saying to Muhammad what David would. Allah wanted to know why Jews would come to Muhammad when they already had the Torah. Okay, so that's that's what you heard. David Wood read uh, this to you hearing. Allah didn't understand why the Jews should come to Muhammad. Okay, Allah didn't understand. Ah, uh, why are the Jews doing this? I've already given them a book. I've given them the Torah. I've given you given them the Bible. In the Bible is found guidance. In the Bible is found light. In the Bible is found what is to lead them into solving issues, solving disputes, solving rifts. Why do they have to come to you? They don't need your advice, Muhammad. They don't need your child. They don't need your reprimand. They don't need your book. They don't need your revelation. They have this and it's enough for them. Why should the Jews bother themselves coming to you, Muhammad? Don't they know I've already given them a revelation? So you see, this would be like uh, the Jews were undermining Allah. Oh, why would you do that? Because I've already given you something. You don't need Muhammad. You don't need the Quran as Christians. You don't need the Quran as, uh, as Jews. You don't need them. You can judge uh, based on your own book. Well, that's what Allah told Muhammad. Well, what next, David Wood? Muhammad gives a dramatic illustration of Allah's point in Sunan Abu Dawood 4449. Okay, so you see, Allah wanted to know why the Jews would come to Muhammad when they already had the Torah. Allah says, I don't understand. This boggles my mind. Okay, this baffles my mind. Why would the Jews do this? I can't, I, this isn't fathomable. You are having your own book. I've given you a revealed religion. I've given you a revealed book. And this book is that which has been leading you always and every time. And it in this book was revealed as stuff about the Messiah. Okay? You already have your book. You don't need Muhammad and his message. You don't need him. Why do you have to go to him for any, uh, what is it, any, any judgment? 
or any or what is it why, why do you have to go to him for your cases and all that you don't have to do that so Allah warned the Jews through Muhammad and I warned them Jews Jews and probably Jews and Christians if you would love to get something from God if you would love to get the straight path from God please you don't need Quran you don't need the, the message of Muhammad stick to your own book stick to your own Bible in the Bible is found an authentic message, accurate message. During the time of Muhammad, the Bible wasn't corrupted. Okay, the Bible wasn't corrupted. So the question is, if the Bible was intact, if the Torah was intact during the time of Muhammad, okay, and Muslims sometimes would claim, would claim the Quran came to abrogate the Bible. While well, in the Quran itself, there isn't any such writing. Even in Surah Al-Nisa 47, the Quran says it came to affirm or confirm the message of the Bible. You get that? During the time of Muhammad, the Bible was intact. It wasn't corrupted. So when was the Bible corrupted? <laughs> you see, it's just that Muhammad had wanted to find himself in the Bible, but there wasn't an iota of information about Muhammad. That is where he began developing some hatred for the Jews and the Christians because they didn't accept him to be a person uh, who had been uh, prophesied of in the Bible. You get that? But he had even the Bible in his arm and believed it to be something authentic, something accurate. He believed in the apostolicity of the Bible, genuity and accuracy of the Bible. So why are you claiming to the Bible was corrupted when Muhammad came and that's why Allah gave him some new revelation to give to his people and all that Muhammad is going to affirm to you that the Bible wasn't corrupted during his time. David Wood, let's proceed. Where we see Muhammad's reaction to the Jews coming to him for judgment. Okay, so you see, Muhammad gives, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Muhammad gives uh, this illustration of Allah's uh, Allah's uh, point in Sunan Abu Dawood uh, 4449. Okay, so let's read, uh, let's uh, read uh, Sunan Abu Dawood, Hadith number 4449. Let's read it. In 7th century Arabia, the person who judged a dispute would sit on a judgment cushion. Okay, so according to uh, David Wood, that is exactly what the Hadith says. Okay, what next? Cushion. Watch what Muhammad does. Okay, so according to this, uh, David Wood, uh, where we see Muhammad's uh, reaction to the Jews coming to him for judgment. Okay, okay, so in Su Sunan Abu Dawood, Hadith number 4449, uh, that is where we see Muhammad's reaction uh, to the Jews when they came to him for uh, judgment. Okay, that's actually where we're going to see his reaction. Well, what next? Okay, so he says in 7th century Arabia, 7th, meaning 700 years ago, okay, back then in Arabia, the person who judged a dispute, okay, if anybody was a judge and was uh, going to judge a dispute, fancy in the Bible where we encounter the idea that uh, there hadn't been um, elders among the Jews and thus uh, Moses himself would be the judge and he would stand from morning to even, evening listening to people's um, cases and be solving and be advising and all that so his in-law uh, Jethro actually gave him an advice to uh, do something that would help uh, so that uh, the huge uh, the issues that were very much heavier for the people would come to Moses and he would sort them out for uh, them and that exactly that actually helped a lot so uh, during the time of seven centuries back then in Arabia when a person was ever going to uh, judge a dispute that person would sit on a judgment uh, uh, cushion okay what next David Wood okay he says we should watch what Muhammad does what did Muhammad do that's gonna appear 
in the second section. I'll be getting to him. So, the video is actually going to show us what Muhammad did when the Jews actually confronted him, when they came to him seeking for uh, judgment on their cases. I'll be getting to him. Muhammad had uh, seated in his cushion. I'll be getting to him. And surely the Jews had come to him. Master, Allah's prophet. Mayhaps, I think, I think, I probably, I actually think uh, they came to Muhammad just to test him. Because if you claim to be uh, God's messenger, if you claim to be equivalent to Moses, equivalent to Jesus Christ, then mayhaps you know a lot. Oh, you see, you know a lot and you are, uh, you, you can transcend uh, stuff. So I hope you get to him. So uh, help us, help us with uh, solving this issue. And Muhammad, I think, I think he hadn't any knowledge, knowledge about solving uh, this, uh, this public. Because I think it wasn't the same day he gave them uh, this reply. Perhaps he was just uh, keenly listening to Allah and Allah whispered into his ear, uh, telling them that they already have something or something like that. But I think he went and they didn't know what to do uh, to give them as an answer. So he just told them, Masa, you already have something. Why do you want to test me? <laughs> this is temptation. You shouldn't do that. Okay. You already have something. Allah has given you because I don't think Allah actually whispered something into my here, but he went back and thought, uh, give it an afterthought that these people has come to test me, please. They're not going to get me. Let me just tell them they have a book and they should look into their book because I'm even copying your book. Why do you have to come to me for uh, something? You see, your book uh, carries much wisdom. Okay, your book is inspired. Go buy your book and don't don't worry me. Let me do my prophetic work. <laughs> okay, so we ended up here and the video actually says, uh, when the Jews confronted Muhammad, he says something. Okay, so we're going to watch what Muhammad did and in the next section. Well, greetings to everybody. Make sure to help us with your comments. Drop your comments under the comment section. Uh, make sure to also... I'll tag everybody for us, all Islamic channels, and also uh, tag David Wood for me and Shamshamoon and Co. Christian Prince. And also make sure to uh, like the program, subscribe, and also share the program to your loved ones for us. Shall we meet up here once again some other time? Bye bye.